Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. Whilst the old crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had not root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let's anyone with tears hear. Hear then the parable of the swamp. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. For as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no roots, but endures only for a while. And when troubles and persecution arise on account of the word, that person immediately fall away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the laws of wealth choke the word, and it yield nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understand it, who indeed bears fruits and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in other sixty, and in other thirty. The gospel of the world. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today, we have such an interesting readings, and more especially, Jesus' parable of the soul. For a year like this, I guess most of us have been part of that sowing process, where we dig in soil, planted seed, allow it to grow. We find out that in the Old Testament reading, we saw Rebecca. For those of us who actually read the lessons or play a little bit with the Bible by reading it, we find out that the same episode of child bearing occurred with Rebecca, so was her mother-in-law. Sarah. We find out that two children, one was loved by a father, the other was loved by a mother. And then we see Paul struggling with the children that are in Rome, the Christian church, if I may say so. But actually the church was not yet planted. But there were a lot of people who believed in Christ to Paul's missionary journey, and they all find their way where? In Rome, because Rome was like Washington, D.C., New York, L.A. That's where action takes place. 
That's where dreams are fulfilled. That's where influence come into our being. Like Washington, D.C. or New York, you find out a lot of immigrants like us are here. And sometimes we bring our culture into the culture of the American people. And we, you yourself will here start being inclusive. And Paul was very troubled. If you go back to chapter 7, Paul was talking like he don't know what's going on now. And when he starts chapter 8, we find out that Paul said, in other words, because what Paul was saying in chapter 7 was like, it seems like all is lost. But it's not so. And here we see the Bible of the Soar that we all have in mind. It's one of the most popular Bible among Christ's Bible. And we have always preached on it, on this one area. And one thing I ask God is, how can you make this Bible new in my life? How can I reflect on it, not on the whole sin of those who fall on the pathway, those who fall on the, the, the stony way, on the sunny way, not that I am concerned about. What I'm concerned is, when you look at your life today, I'm talking to you now, and those are things you will be questioning yourself. When you look at the lives of the people you care about most, when you look at everything that is happening in our country, America, and in the world at large, France is on flame right now. Other parts in Africa are in, are in turmoil. What are your deepest hope for the world? What are your expectations? What are you expecting? I'm not simply asking what you want or wish it could happen. What are those things that you would work for and do everything you could to make it happen? Like most of us, especially within the African um, um, people, they always pray that one of their family member would be called <laughs> a church goer or a first person in college and when speeches are made they would say i am the first to get to college that's what you intend to do but what i'm talking about is a kind of hope that gets hold of you and wouldn't let go that hope that embraces you what is hope the assurance of things to come the reality, that's the hope. That hope that will come. That's what you're looking for. I am asking about the things in which you would invest all that you are and all that you have. Your life, your energy, your effort, your money, your time, and your love. Any of these talks about your hope. We all do have hope. Coming to America was the greatest hope in my life. And when I got here, I step on this floor. I step on this ground. I step on the soil. I said, thanks be to God. That was my hope. I want you to dig deep within yourself as you answer my questions. Answer it in your heart. What are the hope that seems too good to be true? Is it what our politician promise us that they will give us and we hope that it will happen? Or is it the hope that one day you will become a millionaire? What are some of these hope? That bring tears to your eyes that you may have never shared with another person because they were too personal and precious to take a risk to talk about things in your life that is so important. 
and tears come out of your eyes. Now speak those hope softly in your heart. We all have hope, even at the end of our days on earth, there is still hope. Because we hope to go to heaven. The younger generation are hoping to become some of the most wonderful people in the world in terms of jobs, in terms of politics, in terms of children. What are your hope? Speak softly to yourself. Speak of them in your heart. Name them one by one. As we sing the hymn, count your blessings. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what God has done for you. Some people are sitting in their houses watching television. From nowhere there is, a, there is some kind of a flying object known as cat that caught their children or grandchildren. And you, left, and you are left disappointed. And sometimes you ask the question, Lord, why? Why me? What about why the other parents who are suffering now? Are you the only one that God cares for? God said that to Job. Job! Were you here when I was creating the world, the mountains and the valleys? Were you here? You reflect on them and ask yourself what you should have done. The action you would have taken. My guess is that most of us will be thinking of maybe a relationship or life full of hope or a love that never ends. Well-being for your parents, wholeness, meaning, profound joy, deep peace, forgiveness, and justice. Could be your hope. What is your hope? What have you not achieved yet that you, you still believed you will? That's where your hope comes from. Whatever you just name in your heart, that hope carries the seed of your life. This seed is asking something of you. It is a call to service and this seed is waiting to be planted and given existence. Think of yourself as a farmer. Are you given a seed to plant? Yes, I believe so. What should be your action when you are given a seed to plant? Who is that seed? And what is that seed? I don't know. But if I may use the seed as an analogy of what I'm saying, you will look for a fertile soil with a lot of sunshine and just, I mean just the correct rainfall and also protect your seed from birds of the year. That's what you would do. Now the sower was given a seed and he's moving on. Is it carelessness? Why do some of them fell on stony ground? I don't think any of you would if you're given a seed to plant. Your children could be your seed. Your husband, your marriage relationship could be your seed. Your church could be your seed. What have you done to keep this church holy? Could be your seed. You will work with a lot of sunshine and all the rest of it. The new spring from animal like square, you will protect your, your, your plant from animal when it springs up from goats and sheep. So now, let's start our engine and let's listen to our gospel reading today. A sower went out to sow. Where would you expect the sower to plant this seed? This question is for you. Where do you plant your seed? We are looking at it on the reverse. It's me, the sower. Where do you want to sow the seed of your life? Think about it. In a good soil, of course. That's where it should be. The answer is obvious. 
destroyer sow seed hoping for and desiring a crop abundantly. It's not only the vegetables, the colored green, the corn, whatever you sow, it could be your children. Do you sow them so that they may be on a fertile ground with just enough of sunshine, just enough of rain, just enough and of protection so that they may become somebody you want them to be? Yes, when I give myself to another, invest my life in a relationship, or offer my time, energy, effort, and love I do so with the intention and hope that something good will come out of it. I want my seed and their soil to be fruitful. Sometimes we forgot that we're getting older in age and getting weaker in strength. And the one who carries us is that seed that was given to you. Now that you have life and strength, that seed that will hold you on to see your doctor, that seed that will come in the morning and say, Mom, Dad, are you okay? Do you have your medication all set up in a medication box? That seed, that seed. Yesterday I went to the the zoo in Washington. Now you have all these grandchildren. They do things differently now. In our time, we would have had the, the child's party at home, or maybe comes to church, and after church, invite all the Sunday school kids. But they send us to work in that zoo <laughs> at my age. Yes, I did. But what did I have from it? Even though I was mad, when grandkids are pulling you from left to right, when I had to stand up in queue to watch their most favorite animal, and I guess all of you know their favorite animal. I may not ask you the question, but you know. The black and white. Yes, the panda. If you take a child to the zoo and that child did not see a panda, you are done. <laughs> And we stand in line. At some point, I took the oldest among the grandchildren and said, stand in line, I'm going to find somewhere to sit. And you move, when my time comes, I'll join you later. I don't have that legs. But you may not know the beauty for those who have gone in there. When you get out of that hot climate and the panda door is open, when you go there, you start feeling heaven and hell. It's like you are in hell. Where the master is. I felt so refreshed that I don't want to get out there because I was steamy hot when I get there. And by the time I get to the middle, I was so afresh that I keep taking pictures when I don't supposed to take because I want to stay long. That's life. That's what you sow. No good so I sow seeds knowing that they wouldn't grow. That they will not be eaten by a bird, fall amongst rock, or be choked out by thorns and weeds. No good farmer will think about that. Because those are your basic wants for you to have a good harvest. As a person from a farming community all my life, and as a backyard gardener in the United States, I always and will take all precaution to make sure that I planted my seed with the best of topping soil, making sure that my garden is exposed to sunshine, fence my garden from animals and water it on a daily routine and uproot unwanted plants from choking my seed. That's what we all should do for our children. For our loved ones and for our food. Why does Joshua do what he did? That's the question that keeps ringing in my head when I was preparing this sermon. Why? Why did you not secure your seeds? 
Why you did not look at the right and proper place to sow your seed? Why you have to hold on carelessly with your seed, walking around, some are falling well, in bad places? Why? As for me, if I'm given a seed, I'll have it in my bag or inside my lunch pack or whatever that so that one seed may not fall by the wayside. Why in the world would a sower sow that seed in a hard packed place amongst rock, amongst tongues? It doesn't make sense. And that makes me think there is more to this parable than we usually see and hear. One of the usual interpretations of this parable goes something like this. Jesus is the soil. Jesus is extravagant and generous. Jesus sows seeds on every kind of soil. And the only question is what kind of soil it is. It is a hard soil. It's a rocky soil. Thorny soil. A good soul. My Jesus, whom I worship, will never plant his seed on a thorny soil, or in a bad soil, or in a rocky soil. I know my Jesus will plant his seed, and I am part of that seed, and he will plant me in that place where I may grow best. It may plant me where I may produce more. It may plant me where others will look at me and expand, get so much involved in my character and my being. That's the kind of Jesus I believe. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, Jesus is good all the time. And he will always plant you in that good soil. That soil that will become best in your family. That soil that will be best in this country. That soil that the world will look at you and admire you like Martin Luther King and others who have served God. Where are you? Where do you think you will plant your seed? Jesus is planting you. Where are you planting your children and grandchildren? How do you plant them? How do you make them good? How do you look over your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents? How? That's the seed Jesus planted. In Africa, and more particularly in Nigeria, parables are more inclusive in their day to day conversation because they have observed nature as part of their life in Nigeria. And they never say something without making parables of nature. Listen to one of them. A man being shot doesn't make him a boy. Or another. Even if a, goo, if a goat has a frown face, it cannot lack the buyer at the market. You don't go for the face. You look for how wealthy the goat is. He said the same song that melts the wax is also capable of hardening the clay. A one-eyed person will thank God if he or she sees a man that is blind. These are things that we use day to day. Because of nature. And Jesus always used parable because parable is like a, a, a syringe and a needle. It pierces in, it goes in, and the medicine is being pushed into your body and you become well. This is what Jesus is saying. Plant your seed. He gave us example of the type of seed and the type of places and the condition of planting. He said, plant it. Where would you plant your seed? If you have planted your seed bad, you will never have a proper harvest. I am thank God in this zoo I learned a lot. I see young boys, black boys whom we always condemn, especially on Father's Day. They with their, wife, their girlfriends or wife, I don't know, but they all have their strollers going along and the women sit back this time. And the fathers are pushing the strollers and the, 
and that the woman is instructing how it should be done. I said to myself, I said, thanks be to God. Now they are getting there. Brothers are getting better. They try to implement others the things they do. Let us pray for our black brothers who have neglected their children, who have been given the soil, the seed to plant, and they did not plant it. In the long run, you know what I said? I said to my wife, I said, you know what? As it was, now it will change. If this generation continue being there as dad for their children, it will become a headache for some of us who are living in Africa to come over here to know who should come. Now we don't have his mom. No African child who left Africa to come here will bring the father. It's the mom first. And when mom comes, she will negotiate that father comes. But the children desire is the mom. But if our boys are doing what they're doing, these children will start thinking, who comes first, mom or dad? I pray and leave you with the sower sowing a seed. Jesus has given you the opportunity to sow your seed. If you have done it, and you've done it in the wrong way, go to the shopping center. Go and buy mulch. Add some soil there. Create shade, cut down the shade so that light may penetrate. If rain doesn't come, use your water hose and give that plant the ability to grow. So that at the end of the day, you will never go to the store to go and get your vegetables or your backyard garden or your paper or your ball paper, whatever it is, because you have planted it. Jesus is calling you. Be a farmer to the world and the world will become a better place.